Hello, lovely internet strangers. Let's talk about sex and sexuality during lockdown, shall we? As you can see on the screen, we are kicking things off with a particularly fascinating article, Coronavirus Diaries, a quarantine fling with my roommate has me questioning my sexuality. The loneliness of isolation has meant that identity is less important than intimacy. Now, the even more interesting thing about this article is that this is not the original headline. This is the original headline. Coronavirus Diaries, I'm a lesbian, but since the lockdown, I've been sleeping with my male roommate. I saw this article shared on Twitter before they changed the headline, which they obviously did in response to backlash from it. At some point, I'll probably do a few videos pertaining to bisexuality in some way. In case you didn't know, I am bisexual and I have a lot of opinions about the way bisexuality is discussed, represented, that probably isn't what you would expect from the mainstream LGBTQ conversation. My opinion is not tainted by ideology. It comes to you straight from the source of my lived experience as well as my my amateur interest in researching sexuality, evolutionary biology, etc. As I ran my hands through my roommate's chest hair, it hit me that I hadn't had sex with a man in three years. That was the length of time that had passed since I'd fallen in love with a new friend on a backpacking trip to Europe and subsequently realized I was more attracted to women. Even after that relationship fizzled, I started hanging out at lesbian bars, continued dating women, and even came out to my mother. In my life, the chapter on heterosexual romance, I thought, was closed. But times are different now. Anything is possible in a pandemic. I held up my hands as he looked lifted my sweater over my head. My desire was strong and surprising. Now here's where I get irritated because I would not call this woman a lesbian. I would call this woman a bisexual woman who moved into a lesbian phase of her life, shall we say. Most women are bisexual to some degree. There are some true lesbians. I'm friends with one such woman and there are some true straight women and I'm also friends with one of those kind of women. But most women fall somewhere in between that. That can be everything from in the center, women who are equally attracted to men and women, both physically and romantically, they're just as likely to have relationships and have sex with men and women, then you have all kinds of variations on this. You have women who mostly have romantic relationships with women, but they equally enjoy having sex with men. There are women who mostly have romantic relationships with men, but equally enjoy having sex with women. Some women go through phases like this woman, but to say all of a sudden she realized she was a lesbian after she'd already had plenty of sex and relationships with men, to me, it doesn't make any sense. True lesbians are incredibly rare, i.e. my friend who has never experienced attraction to men, never had crushes on men, never had relationships with men, but also doesn't hate men. She has plenty of friends that are men and always has. But other women that I would describe as lesbians are women who had bad relationships with men. And I don't mean that they were abusive and they had a bad experience. I mean, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. The biggest thing here for me is this woman's surprise that she could experience attraction for a man. If this was my friend who's a lesbian, this would be a WTF moment because she's never had crushes on men, never had relationships or sex with men. So if all of a sudden she was telling me a story about how she hooked up with her male roommate, you would have to pick my job off the floor. Now, a woman who described that she had previously had relationships and sex with men telling a story about how when she got lonely, she was interested in having sex with her roommate who's a man. Is this a story? <laughs> Something people don't want to talk about with the LGBTQ identity is the role of preference. That is to say that there are many bisexual women who experience this attraction to both sexes, but they tend to kind of make a choice about where they feel more comfortable or where they want to focus their attention. She says she started hanging out at lesbian bars and continued dating women, and you can kind of get an inertia with that. Dating women is different than dating men. If that's what you get used to and you feel no real motivation, to seek out the other kind of partner, the other sex, it doesn't mean you stopped experiencing attraction to the other sex. You just moved into this particular phase. You made a particular choice. No one wants to talk about choice when it comes to sexuality. And I know multiple bisexual women who overwhelmingly were sexually and romantically attracted to women, but ended up married to men. Their soulmate life partner match was a man. So sexuality is incredibly complicated, at least for women. On the male side, it seems more like bisexual men are, are very few and far between, and I have no reason to believe that that is because of social pressure. I skipped some of her annoying BS. She starts panicking about being quarantined and the isolation, and so she invites her roommate to have drinks in the living room. Dressed in stained sweatpants, I pulled my stringy hair away from my face with a clip. I had down two glasses of wine already. The news that all the restaurants in the city were ordered to close had filled my feed. As of the skyrocketing death toll in Italy, the world was changing every hour, and for the worse, I struggled to locate myself in the midst of chaos and fear. 
girl definitely sounds like you could use a drink, so good thing you decided to do that. He showed up with a bottle of wine and a smile. We sunk down on opposite ends of the couch, offloading our anxieties about the pandemic. Why had I never noticed his mop of curly hair, his almond-shaped eyes? After a bottle of wine, our feet accidentally touched. I yanked them back. We drank another bottle. I could feel his eyes on me, but I couldn't return his gaze. He reached for my hand and asked in a hushed tone if he could kiss me. For a sliver of a second, I wondered if he'd hurt me if I said no, but that worry was eclipsed by my desire. My ache for touch and spontaneity during a time when the chances were both were rapidly diminishing. Once we kissed, I couldn't stop. I didn't feel the dread I had felt before with men. I didn't feel the pressure to feign pleasure. I wanted him for real. Oh my sweet lord. Where do I even start? One, his almond-shaped eyes. Are you kidding me? Was this some fucking dollar store romance novel? Second, she wondered if he would hurt her if he said no. And you're roommates with this person? I'm sorry, but personally, I would not be roommates with a man who I suspected would hurt me if I said no to kissing him. She should think about that and where that comes from. To be fair, based on the comment she made at the end of this paragraph, maybe she's just referring to her general anti-male sentiment because before she felt dread with men and she felt she had to feign pleasure, which only serves to undermine her claim that she became a lesbian because she was more into women versus feeling an aversion or having bad experiences in relationships with men. When we went back to his room, I jumped in the shower. Whatever the hookup meant about my identity, was I bi now? Was I succumbing all over again to the rom-com fantasies of my youth? I couldn't help but smile at the possibility of a quarantine romance. But the next day when he didn't text me or come out of his room, I started to panic. Would we go back to being strangers after this? Each hour my phone remained still, I felt used and more ridiculous for imagining that we could have a relationship. At around five o'clock, he texted me to hang out. We drank again. We talked. It became clear through the fog of my fantasy that he wasn't interested in or emotionally capable of having an end-of-the-world romance. I thought about it. Would I be okay with having sex with my roommate without developing a relationship? Would the desire for men he'd rekindled seem somehow false post-isolation out in the fresh air? I wasn't sure about the future, about what to do now, but then he ran his hands up my leg. And that's the end of her story, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my sweet lordy lord. This really dovetails nicely with my recent video about my friend and her dating stories and my general thoughts about women in dating. After she hooks up with him, that she's going all these fantasies about them having a relationship. Even though she admits earlier in the article that she invited him to have drinks in the living room because she was feeling lonely. She didn't invite him out there to hook up, but she was motivated by this isolation and the loneliness. So why are you jumping to conclusions after one hookup that you guys are going to have some kind of relationship and this means something when previously you were just roommates and you did not have a relationship. You were not friends and roommates. You were just roommates. And I think this is something that most women can't help but do. The minute they have a sexual encounter, it like means something. I'm not going to sit here and say that having sex with someone means nothing to me, even if they're just a stranger, but I certainly don't jump to, oh, I bet we're going to have a relationship now. Or maybe I would like one, but that doesn't mean I start going down fantasizing about it after one sexual encounter. You don't know anything about him, girl. How are you going to have a relationship? What does romance mean to you? But my favorite part of this is that he basically tells her, I'm not emotionally capable of having an end of the world romance, but I do want to hang out and have sex with you at night. Yeah, the man is isolated. He has a dick. He wants to fuck someone and you're the only one available. This is like if you're in your house and it's a snowstorm and you forgot to go stock up on food and you're like, I don't really want to eat that can of beans, but it's all I really have. Then you're going to eat it. That's it. You're just a can of beans to him in the back of the cabinet when that's all he has left. And this is very reminiscent of the story I shared from my friend's dating life in that recent video where the guy she was interested in being exclusive with and being his girlfriend told her that he wasn't emotionally available for that, but they could just hook up. And she was legitimately considering it until she asked for my advice and I, in no uncertain terms, told her that sounded like a terrible idea. If this chick is also lonely and she just wants to have someone to hook up with too, if he's just a can of beans in the back of the cabinet that she's gonna eat because there's nothing else around, like, no problem. Go for it. But it's just funny to see that as soon as they hook up, all of a sudden her head is spinning with these romance fantasies. The other interesting thing is she doesn't even talk about the sex itself. She just talks about the lead up to the hookup. If this is a movie, we would fade to black as soon as they kiss, right? Did you enjoy it? Like, we can kind of infer that she did because she's fantasizing about the relationship 
relationship, but it's not really safe to assume that. I have known women who will pursue a relationship with a guy they had sex with, even though the sex wasn't that good. And I will tell them, dick is abundant and low value. Move on. But it's a thing. Moving on to my next article. Women are having a lot of bad sex during COVID. Study finds. Oh, there's a study. You don't say. I'm sure that means it's 100% accurate. So there is a small recent study published in the International Journal of Gynecology and Obstetrics that says many people may actually be having more sex during COVID-19, even though stress usually lowers libido. I clicked through to the study. It's an observational study. They're essentially comparing data from before pandemic to now. And it's small sample size. I wouldn't read too much into it, but if we're going to go with their results, they say, although they're having more sex, the quality of the sex is another story. As you can see, small sample size, 58 women. It's worth noting this study was conducted by Turkish researchers. So is the experience of Turkish women similar to American women or women in other countries? Who knows? The study shows women have been having more sex since the pandemic started and more sexual desire in general. The sex therapist notes that some people have a withdrawal response to stress where where they don't want to engage in sex, but for other people to have an approach response where they will use it as a stress reliever. Researchers found that the quality of women's sexual functioning, arousal, lubrication, ability to orgasm were down. And they say there are many reasons why that might be because the overwhelming ambient stress of the pandemic can make it too hard to enjoy sex, even if you want it and are having more of it. They say it's hard to turn off the worry and get present in the moment. Now they refer to us, maybe they're just referring to women, but it kind of sounds like they're talking about people in general, but but the study is only on women and there's a really great book called Come As You Are that discusses sexuality and the differences between men and women. And one of the differences between men and women is that women are much more affected by emotional and mental factors when it comes to sexual desire. Essentially, people are like cars in that they have accelerators and brakes. And some people have very sensitive accelerators and some people have accelerators that you need to apply a lot of force to get going. And then some people have brakes that are very sensitive. You can tap them and everything comes to a screeching halt. And others have brakes that you have to press on them pretty hard to get things to slow down. And on a group level, men tend to have more sensitive accelerators and less sensitive brakes. That is to say, it's easy for men to get going and it's hard to turn them off. On the flip side, women tend to have fairly sensitive brakes and accelerators that require a lot more effort. So it can be hard to get women going, especially if they're feeling depressed or anxious, and then any little thing can bring the whole thing to a grinding halt. Then they discuss what to do about it. And I find it very interesting that they say, not all sex has to be great because this is like a pretty feministy like wellness website and I feel like most of the feminist line is that you need to be having great sex because I've read so many posts about hashtag me too stories that essentially are based on a woman not having great sex so I'm not really sure what distinction they would make here that makes this not a me too story if you end up having not great sex because they actually link right here I clicked on this earlier to an article about bad orgasms and like I get what they're saying like an orgasm is a physiological response that can be disconnected from your mental arousal, i.e. someone who gets raped can have an orgasm and it doesn't mean they wanted that orgasm. However, they also include consensual sex where the person describes feeling pressured into having sex and feeling pressured to have an orgasm. And to me, that's a whole separate issue. That is the issue of women needing to learn to be more assertive and to learn what they want and to advocate for themselves and assert their boundaries and say, I don't feel like having sex right now. Or if they're going to have sex for the sake of keeping their relationship connected, then suck it up and accept the consequences that maybe you're going to have an orgasm and it wasn't exactly what you wanted, but this is part of the mutuality of your relationship. Another thing from the book, Come As You Are, is that a lot of women really respond well to men initiating sex, even when the women themselves were not feeling that desire. But once the man got them going, so to speak, then they wanted it. This is why you hear about that phenomenon of lesbian bed death when you have two women in the relationship that eventually if neither of them has anything close to a masculine level sex drive then sex will kind of come to a halt because neither of them will initiate whereas in gay couples with two men in the relationship having two male sex drives you don't really get in that bed death situation where heterosexual couples get into a bed death situation is when the woman stops saying yes so the man is initiating and the woman keeps saying no babe i'm too tired no babe i don't feel like it yeah you don't feel like it now 
Let him warm you up, possibly. Give it a try. Every Woman Should Read Come As You Are by Emily Dagowski. Wouldn't hurt for men to read it too. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.